All right, so now that we're done the uh, rear lift just about, I still have to tidy up a couple of things, get the uh, bump stops installed in the back there. But we're working on the uh, front end now. So I just, I wanted to take the one side apart, just as a kind of a trial run before we videotape the second side of things. And things are going pretty good, other than the uh, bottom ball joint is horrible. Even with a 10 pound sledge, I can't get it to pop. But other than that, it's uh, everything that I was expecting it to be. So it's, uh, I'd say the front's a lot less work than the rear, other than those uh, ball joints. So I got this up as high as I could with the uh, high lift jack. And I just did one single lift off of the front cross member. It goes across under the uh, engine right there. And I've got these hooked up onto the frame horns. They're on a bit of an angle. So you gotta be careful, but the vehicle's plenty sturdy, both wheels off the ground. Put some plates underneath of the stands. So I'm gonna start to take this part now, because I kinda stuck with the other side. I need a break from swinging that sledgehammer. So I'm gonna just uh, put this on the uh, tripod and start whipping this part apart. All right, so to take this off, you need a for these wheels anyway, you need a 22 millimeter socket. If you're going to take the uh, wheels off with a uh, hand wrench, you'd need to loosen them when they're on the ground still. So these are the standard American racing wheels that come on the uh, road tracks. Make sure I don't get this socket locked on here. Put the wheel over here. Alright, I would kind of recommend at this point to take the shocks out because they're uh, kind of compressed. If you drop the suspension down, it's a bit harder to get them out of there. So these are Bilstein's and they don't actually take a socket on the top. They're actually just a flat for a wrench. I think it's about 7 millimeter, but I don't have a wrench for it here. Or you can't quite see that. It's a little bit higher. Okay. So I've just been using a, a tiny adjustable on this, which is not really ideal. Hopefully this doesn't strip. Maybe a little bit rusty. So you get the kind of the feel for that. So I'll finish that off on my own. Then on the bottom, there are some 13 millimeters. Switch the battery around here.
So that could have actually been a little bit dangerous. Probably wouldn't recommend that. I got hit in the back of the arm when that unloaded. So the shock here is uh, limiting the travel. So you can see the shock pulled up into there. So don't do that without a jack supporting it. I've not had that happen before in other vehicles I've worked on. But hey, you learn. All right, so now that I've got that off, I'm going to start loosening up some of the uh, lines that are here. So you're just going to crack this loose. It's a 10 millimeter. We're not going to go very far with it. Push that out first. to loosen that and we'll take this one off because it helps us move the caliper out of the way so right now the brake hose is here on top and we're going to end up putting it underneath so keep that in mind as you're progressing through this so I know where it came from. Take a flat screwdriver and just move these For this one, you kind of just push it out of that support, disconnect it, pull this down over here, get off my hands a bit. Now it's a bit of horsing around to get this uh, brake hose disconnected from that bracket. Obviously you don't want to damage that hose while you're doing this. So eventually I'll get that up and over. So one thing I did was I was bending these ears out of the way. Use them for leverage initially and then bend them over. Let's see, we're getting kind of close. We don't want to force this and damage anything. I don't have as quite as good of tools as I would have hoped to do this job. I was planning on doing this portion of the job next week. But you get the idea. So I have to get a little bit more of this open so I can get that out. And so I'm going to get those two job steps done and then we're going to start looking at the rest of the suspension. All right, so the next step here, we're just gonna take off the caliper adapters. They're 21 millimeter. They're from the factory, they have Loctite on them. So you're gonna probably use a, like a two foot or three foot breaker bar to get them loosened off. Just bear it with me while I stick my head in here so I can locate them. Plenty tight. We 
these are fairly accessible. So now we got that off. Let's grab the U joint. You might be able to reach in there with the back then. Oh yeah. Don't drop the caliper. I'm gonna wire this up here in a minute. Take off the rotor. So we're kind of on the wrong side with the caliper here right now, because this needs to be underneath later. But it's, uh, it's okay for the time being. I'm going to replace these brake lines later, as I will with the back. But you should try to avoid damaging them. So one thing I found out, this doesn't have steering locks on it, so you can actually turn it with the wheels up in the air. But it's still easier to turn with the steering wheel. So we'll take off the uh, stabilizer link now. Hopefully you can see that. The sun again in the way. Perfect. So with this sink, it's a uh, 15 millimeter on the bottom. So I just put the uh, little adjustable up here. It's a kind of a funny type fastener. Got that. I'm just looking for my socket. I seem to have misplaced it. There we are. So these are supposed to have Loctite on them when you're done. Let's try to remember how it all goes together. Just kind of put it back together the way it goes. So that slides over that on the top, bolt on the bottom. So now the sway bar is free on both ends. And it's going to be one of the last things that we put back on. So now for the uh, tie rod end, I believe it was 18 millimeter. Just going to switch my battery over again. Something is it. Oh, this is different on each side. Oh, that's 21. Okay. My battery must be dying. Let's just leave that like that. It's not really under any tension, but it's good practice to leave these on until you whack them. Out of the way. 
So now we're getting to the, the end of things here. So perhaps it was 18 up here. That's what it is. All right. Extensions and swivels all together. So we're not going to take this off all the way because I don't have a jack under the uh, control arm. It's going to get it started. If it comes off, we'll put it back on right away. My battery's really dead. Interesting. Okay, so I just have to switch batteries here and then we'll uh, start taking this part again. All right, so I got that bolt undone. I hit it with a two pound hammer now. So that one is off. Now, try to see what we can see on the bottom one. Like my uh, impact gun has actually got a problem right now. It's not working as well as it should. Lift this up a bit. Got that off. Just have to back up the camera a bit and see if we can see anything. Big hammer. Make sure everything is out of the way. Swinging backwards. supported by the uh, top one right now. That's good. Oh, it's spinning. The upper ball joint is spinning on the inside. Oh, that's annoying. So I have to put a uh, Allen key into it. We'll see if we can get this one down. Just a bit. Now that I don't need to get the wrench in there. Try not to lift the vehicle off the jack stands. There. A little bit more. It'd be handy to have a second person right now. No snag on anything. All right. Nice and 
heavy. That'd be a bit of work to put that back in. So I didn't have any uh, isolators on the bottoms of these shocks for whatever reason. I know the rubber is on the top, so that is okay. Put that back together. So I just have to get this nut off of here. Might be able to get it with the impact gun. Maybe I'll try that. The new knuckles are really heavy. So it'll be a bit of work to get this together. Nope, so it's spinning. So I just an Allen key that goes in the bottom there. So we'll get that off and we'll start looking at putting it back together. All right, so my impact's not working, so we just have to use a power bar for this. Hopefully we can get enough leverage on it. Not to put it on the ground. All right, so my impact gun's got problems, so we're gonna try to get this uh, wheel bearing off of here. I think you can loosen three of the four of these on the vehicle. So one of them is too close to the bottom ball joint. This is not in too bad shape. I'm just gonna screw these in a little bit and then tap on them. Great. So just keep. Uh, memory of where this is, where the uh, wire comes out, then we'll drop the new spindle on. There's an O-ring in here. Alright, so that O-ring protects the surface, so I'm going to put some uh, Never Seize on here, because I did not see an O-ring groove in the new spindles. So I put some copper anti-seize on the uh, bearing on the spindle. This thing has got to be twice as heavy. So put it on. It's a nice close fit. So I'll just snug these up with the uh, impact gun and then I'll use a, a torque wrench to finish this off. I'll provide the torque values in the uh, description of the video. I know these holes are a bit small. This fits the impact socket. Nothing left right there. Doesn't fit that one. Put too much powder coat in this hole. Might need to get a stubby.
I need to use the chrome socket to fit into that guy right there. So like I said, I'll get the impact or the uh, torque wrench out and uh, set this up. All right, so we're getting ready to put things together. I painted the uh, coil spring while I had it out. Got the uh, spacer on top of the uh, rubber isolator. Cleaned off things as best as I could. I think I want to put the uh, knuckle in before I put in the uh, spring. I'm hoping that makes it easier. Maybe to make it worse. I'm not too sure. Try it out. Then I noticed that this uh, boot is starting to tear, so I gotta deal with it before I finish this job. And the, uh, let's see. I think I will put this in after the fact. Just put this to the side. Obviously the end of the coil needs to fit into there. So now that I verify that's in the right spot. Put it out of here. Definitely need a bar. Obviously getting it back up is going to be a bit of a struggle. That's right there. So that's why you need to lift this so far off the ground. Like I've got just a little bit of space under here, enough to get a, a smaller jack. Alright, so it's been a week now and I'm back working on the van. I've got the uh, driver's side done as far as I know at this point. So I did have to replace uh, the tie rod boot. I'll be doing that on both sides. I'll show you what I used to, to do that on the other side. Got some zip ties on here to hold this. I gotta check the wheel clearance still. And then I put a bit of rubber over the brake line and I zip tied it on the back. I don't know if I can see that with the camera or not. So everything is uh, tidied up on this side. It was a bit difficult working from the ground. So this side didn't go very well, but I'm going to show the other side so you can see how it goes the second time around. So uh, I guess we'll just get set up and do that now. So the first thing I need to do is just pull out the uh, spring so I can clean it off and paint it. So what I did find out was that when you're trying to pop the bottom ball joint, you need to have the jack 
under the control arm lifting up at that point. Otherwise, it will not appear to be popped even though it is. So keep that in mind. So now we'll just uh, pull the spring out of here. So uh, I just, like I said, I'm going to clean up all the, the grease off of here and uh, change that boot. I'll show you that, like I said. Then I have another video changing these uh, bump stops on the front. If you haven't changed those yet on your vehicle, you should do that now as part of this job. So the next time you see me on video here, I should have things kind of cleaned up and I'll be working on this uh, spindle here. Alright, sorry for my camera going out there. It's really hot out and it's overheating. So uh, what I'm trying to do right now is use two different jacks in order to get all of the vehicle's weight on the lower control arm. That'll allow me to get the uh, shock absorber in. And once you get the shock absorber in, you're in a, a good position to put the uh, knuckle back on. So you can see, I'm just kind of trying to jockey these two into position here so that I can uh, get a good grip with the three-time jack because this little two-time jack is just not going to have the reach. It's pretty much maxed out there. So now I've got to somehow get the three-time in here with the limited space. It has to be grabbed on reliably enough that it doesn't pop off when we're doing the lift. You can see I moved the brake caliper over to the correct side now. To aid in that step of the job. We're putting the knuckle in. So there's a pile of tension here right now. So I would not recommend putting your hand in there to install the shock. At this point you should have another jack stand or something underneath the lower control arm so that you can get the shock in. So I'm just gonna turn off the camera and find something to put in there and then we'll, we'll be back. All right, so I got a piece of steel here. You might want to go a little bit further beyond what I'm doing right now. Basically there's the two nuts or bolts on the bottom and then the uh, rubber fastener here. So you can just put these up on top ready to uh, Receive the shock. And this is not something you want to take your time doing. You are having a little bit of risk at this point. So this shock will hold the control arm in position when you have the bolts in on the bottom but they have to be completely in all the way otherwise i found that they'll just bend if you only have one in and you have to have the control arm pretty much up flat for these to go in straight otherwise you'll have to you'll end up cross threading them and have to tap them so that's what happened on the other side they're an m8 by 1.25 so I think that's about all my camera's going to be able to handle in the heat. But the important part is there that I've got the shock on. So I'll tighten the bottom ones up. Then I'll snug up the top one. And then that uses a Allen key in the top to hold that. So I'll get that done now. Alright, so i got the shock in there nice and tight. So the next step is going to be to get the knuckle back in. 
now it took a bit of fiddling to get the uh, lower on. And like the channels for putting the uh, nuts onto the ball joints on the top are not that deep. So you'll need to use like an Allen key to hold this. Where on the, uh, to remove it, you could use just a, like a bit from a socket, but it, the Allen key is required because it's a bit smaller to fit in there. If you've got an older van, you should inspect the condition of the rubber. The rubber on my upper ball joint is bad. It's actually torn on the back. I didn't notice that until now, so I just have to keep that greased. I will be changing that there. So these things are pretty heavy. <clears throat> so you'll want to be have the fasteners ready on your side to lift this on. See if we can get them both at the same time or not. That would be super helpful. Looks like we can. So I still have the full weight of the van on the uh, lower control arm and that makes that a lot easier. Now to remove this uh, boot off of here, just put that back into position, drop the fastener on here, so it doesn't drop down, get a hammer, and you just tap on this. So that's off there now. Then the replacement is the Dorman 13566. There's two different sizes in this package. You're going to use the uh, larger of the two. And when you put the nut on all the way, it uh, seals this up nicely. So just place that down on there. It's going to take a second to wipe that out. I'm going to re-grease it and I see a bit of dirt in there. See that stretches right over the hot end nicely. Put that on there. Was a 19 perhaps? No, that's a 21. That starts to spin. So you grab a wrench of some sort just to hold it. The torque on this one is pretty low. I'll have all that written down in the uh, description of the video. I'll do a uh, go over that with the torque wrench afterwards. I think the bottom is a 24, and you got to hold it with a, a quarter inch or a 5 16ths. Let's take a look. It's a 5 16ths, but it's, uh, if the hole is dirty in any way, it's kind of hard to get it in there. So you have to work on that a little bit to get the ball joint to take it. Hopefully the camera doesn't crap out on me right away. Just put the socket in afterwards. And the socket set the right direction. back again with the torque wrench and check that. And like I said, you'll use a, uh, an Allen key and to tighten this one. Not sure if you can get a torque wrench into that one or not, but uh, you'll get a feeling for the uh, how tight it needs to be. 
All right, so here's a shot of me just doing the upper ball joint. So I really think you need to get these uh, long gear wrench uh, wrenches, and then just use this. Uh, see what size it is. Not readily marked, but this is an 18 millimeter, and I don't think you could get a socket in there. And a regular wrench doesn't have the finesse to. Uh, Tighten this up. It's a really tight spot in there. So I probably wouldn't try to do this job without that wrench. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, put the uh, rotor on. So I'm going to put some anti-seize on the hub here. So I'll go and grab that and uh, we'll get back to videotaping here. So at this point we can put the vehicle back down on the jack stand. So I'm just going to gently lower this. Got all the ball joints tight, got the tie rod end tight, the shock is in tight. So this should be uneventful. I always try to do it slowly. So got that. Now we'll just take a look at the rotor, make sure that the face is clean in here, make sure the face of the wheel bearing is clean. There's no steering lock on this vehicle, so you just grab the steering. Turn it all the way around, which will help you with the caliper. Again, it's really hot out, so this just goes on like butter. Make sure you don't touch the uh, brake surfaces. Do make sure that they're clean. No grease on them. So the uh, fasteners that hold the caliper on here are supposed to have Loctite on them. So I have some uh, red Loctite. I'm not sure what it is exactly. I think they spec out. Uh, Loctite number. Yeah, it's in the. It'll be in the description which kind of Loctite you're supposed to use. It's just plugged up close enough to clean that out. If you use the C clamp to compress these, it would help this part a bit eat quite a bit. So we're in, we got the brake line on the back. Just a 10 millimeter. All right, so I made a piece of uh, rubber line to put over the brake hose. You don't want it to be rubbing directly on the uh, knuckle. So just sleeve that over the rubber. So that's good there. This will come up like such. Squeeze that down.
might want to get the last part on first. Not much space to work up here. All right, there's a bit of fiddling with the uh, electrical connector up in here. I won't really be able to see, show you, but you need to get this back on the retainer that holds onto the uh, shock mount, and then plug in the wire, and then clip that back onto here. Then, all right, so we're coming to an end with this project. So I had a bit of trouble with the camera there, it was getting too hot. But uh, what I had to do was I had to pull the brake hose forward to get it taut on both sides. And then I had to bend this out and backward a couple times so that from lock to lock, <clears throat> you can see that or not, the hose is just about touching the coil here. And it's just about touching, it is just touching there. So I'll bend that back a little bit more. It's tricky. I don't know how much time you'd be driving lock to lock, but that's a good reason to put the uh, rubber cover on your brake lines to protect it. I have to wonder if it'd be better to run the brake line on the front, but I'm kind of committed like this for now unless I want to take a, a brake hose off. Let's just put a, a wheel on here, then we'll get the uh, vehicle back on the ground. So similar to the rotor, when you're putting things together, you gotta make sure it's clean on the face here and clean inside the wheel on here. If you had any built up rust more than this, you'd want to scrape it off. Try. In the position there. And these torque down to 140 foot pounds. Quite a bit. So get the impact going to start it. So these are not hub centric. So you got to be careful with the wheel. Make sure that the studs are centered correctly. So you look inside, they're looking pretty good. These are McGuard 06451-14 by 1.5 millimeter. These are pretty nice. I think they're stainless as opposed to plated. If it wasn't so stinking hot out, I'd probably clean them off. So I just gotta tighten this up and then uh, put it down so we can take a look at the uh, spacing of things. So when you do a eight bolt, you go from here to here, then here and down like across. And then you go work your way across. Let's just get the jack stands out. put it down you should take the tire and just hit it a couple times to make sure that it's not caught on a ridge somewhere. So 
So just stand back and take a look at uh, the height now. Obviously it needs a wheel alignment. When you look down the uh, body line, I would say the top of the tire just matches this on the uh, road tracks. This is a LT24575 R16, some Chinese tire, high fly, vigorous. So now we'll just torque this up. It's important to do that correctly. And then we'll take some measurements uh, in the next clip after this. It's up to 140, which is about the end of the limit for this torque wrench. Cross. There's so many you're bound to miss one, so what I do now is just go all the way around and do eight clicks. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so I'll get the other side tight, and then like I said, we'll get some measurements. All right, so I took some final measurements here. I ended up getting a six inch lift on the front of the vehicle and a four inch lift on the back with this kit. I did move the vehicle forward about eight feet and rolled back into position where I had marked it just so that I could give the front wheels an opportunity to uh, kind of adjust. Because when you put them down from up, the uh, control arms need to move around a little bit. So that gives me uh, so on the front, it was 19 inches from the center of the wheel to the fender well, and now it's 25 inches. I expect that will settle down a little bit, but there's really not much to settle in there. There's only a couple pieces, there's not any big rubber bushings or anything that are going to settle. Then in the back, it went from 21 inches to the center of the wheel to 25 inches. So where I'm sitting right now without an alignment is basically what you would consider level. So my wheel arches are the same front and back where they were off by two inches previously with the back having a bit more clearance. And this vehicle is 8,685 pounds total. It's 39.83 on the front axle and 47.02 on the rear axle. So it's a fairly heavy vehicle. And it's, uh, I'll provide some more measurements in the description but I think it's about an inch lower than what a new van would be without any interior because I had measured one last year just to get a feeling of how much uh, settling I've had on this vehicle. So if you have a newer vehicle, you're only going to be higher than this. You're not going to be any lower. But I think that this is pretty good. So I'll do the measurement just so you can see it. In real life. When I did it the as found the first time, it was sort of quick, but I had taken it uh, much more carefully previously. So from here to the center of the American racing wheel is 25 inches. The ground has got a bit of a dip, so uh, It's roughly 12 inches of clearance there, maybe 12 and three quarters. So there's, like I said, there's a dip at that wheel. I'll measure this wheel here. Again, it's uh, 25 inches to the center, maybe uh, 24 and three quarters. 
see where my thumb is. That's 25. You look in the wheel well, you can see the fox shock there. You can see the top of the knuckle. Keep an eye on the uh, brake lines for sure. Just want us to focus on that tire. Take the camera off and take a peek underneath. This has uh, steps on it so it's a bit easier to get in. So I got a lot more clearance. I'm completely comfortable taking this just about anywhere now. I would never go anywhere I'd risk getting stuck. I'm more worried about obstacles than anything else. So we'll take a look at how high it is to the uh, step on the inside of the vehicle, so you didn't have running boards. I gotta get my interior back in position here. So obviously the ground might be a little bit off level here, but we're, it's 23 inches off the ground to the uh, bottom of the step here. So that's a, a bit of a challenge. You could get on it if you grab onto the steering wheel. You can pull yourself in. This uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, it's an 08. It has a two inch lift on it. And it's clearance in the middle. Again, there's a bit of variation in the ground, but it has probably less than the van now. If you look at that cross member in the middle, obviously the van's got a way longer wheelbase than the Jeep. But for uh, hopping over obstacles, I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape. So I'll probably put this part of the video in the front and the rear lift video. I'm not driven it as of yet. So anyway, I'm pretty excited about that. It ended up being a three day job for myself, doing a bit of learning here and there. I'd say it's uh, a bit of a harder job. Some of the bigger tools that you're using anyway need two jacks, people may not have that. But it's definitely something I'd recommend giving a shot if you are mechanically uh, able. I might get a uh, longer chin spoiler for this. If you look at like the Ford F-350s, they have one that's about five inches tall or something. So the higher you get, the worse your mileage is going to be. So uh, I might do that. So. Thank you for watching.